Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to take you through everything you need to know to create your very first cross-platform app with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms for the user interface across iOS, Android, Windows, and even more. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno, and here on this channel, I talk about a bunch of cool tech-related things, things that I like in my life, such as Legos, and of course, software development. I often put some of my live streams here. You can find me every Friday on twitch.tv slash James Montemagno. But what I want to do today is not do a live stream. I want to walk you through the bits and pieces of creating your very first Xamarin application with C Sharp, XAML, .NET, and Xamarin. Now, what we're going to do is create an iOS Android application. We could share that code with Windows, Mac OS, or others, but we're going to focus in on those and use Xamarin Forms to build a cross-platform user interface. Now, before I get into that, that may seem like we're overwhelmed a little bit, but let's step it back a little bit. Let's roll back here, and let's actually talk about the technology first that we're using. Now, I am a C-sharp developer. It's one of my favorite programming languages, and it's one of the languages that you can build and use to build .NET applications. And .NET is a free cross-platform runtime that works across different operating systems. And there's several frameworks that are built on top of .NET that utilize .NET to execute your, your language of choice, C Sharp, F Sharp, or Visual Basic. And like I said, I'm going to use C Sharp, which is an objective, uh, an object-oriented programming language. So .NET is the core foundation. Xamarin is the framework built on top of .NET that enables us to write C Sharp and .NET code and logic and run it specifically on iOS and Android devices, which is really, really cool. And um, on top of that, we have a few other pieces of technology that we'll be using. So Xamarin is the framework, but there are specifically UI frameworks that we're gonna use. Um, to build a cross-platform native user interface, and that is called Xamarin Forms. So you can kind of think of it, .NET on the base on the bottom, Xamarin are giving you those bindings, the ability to write and run C Sharp on iOS and Android, and then Xamarin Forms on top, giving you that abstraction to write and create cross-platform native user interface. So it's kind of important to understand those different building blocks because um, even though we're gonna create a cross-platform UI, we could add other types of applications and share code with other types of applications such as web applications, desktop applications, um, tvOS applications for Apple TV, watch applications, and a whole lot more. The cool part about .NET and C Sharp and this thing that I'm talking about is that you learn one programming language, one framework, and you're able to build applications for all of these different operating systems and devices, which is really, really neat. I started off building printer software um, back for Canon a long time ago, and I was building desktop applications, specifically with two different frameworks for the UI called WinForms and WPF. And it was a natural fit coming over to build Xamarin applications because I already knew C Sharp and I already knew .NET and how to access the file system and all the other things that I needed to. So I just needed to learn the UI piece and of course the iOS and Android specifics. But nowadays, really getting started, it's super duper simple and it's really easy to get started. So let's head over to my computer and let's get going. All right, so you can of course go to Xamarin.com and you'll land right here and you can learn about all the different bits and pieces of Xamarin, uh, the different native integrations that you have for iOS, Android, or other operating systems. I mentioned Mac OS, TV OS, watch OS, and more. And of course, how to share code and build different user interfaces. Here is Xamarin Forms, which is that UI library that we're gonna be using to create a cross-platform, native, beautiful application here. All right, so let's actually get going. I'm gonna boot up Visual Studio 2019. Now, this is where I'm going to go ahead and create my application. It's going to be where I'm doing all of my different development. Visual Studio is an IDE, an integrated development environment. There's other ones out there um, that you can use to build Xamarin applications. Visual Studio is from Microsoft. It's completely free with the community edition. There's other tiers, of course, but you can build everything for free with Xamarin and Visual Studio 2019, the community edition. 
There's also Visual Studio for Mac. So if you're on a Mac OS operating system, you can go ahead and also create an application uh, over there, uh, which is nice. Now you're able to create iOS and Android applications on either Mac or PC. Um, it's best if you're doing um, iOS to have a Mac around, but it's not necessarily required until you're packaging and finally uploading your application and doing deep debugging. But to get started, one or the other are just fine. So we're going to create a brand new project here. Now, when you go in and you create your project templates, there's going to be a, a lot of different settings here uh, inside of Visual Studio. So uh, often what I like to tell developers to do is come in and, and narrow it down specifically into like mobile uh, here, which is good. And you'll see that there's Android application, iOS application, and then specifically a cross-platform mobile app with Xamarin Forms. And that's the one that we're going to choose. Now, if you create one of these on top Android or iOS, those are going to be iOS and Android specific projects that out of the box use iOS and Android um, traditional native user interface. The Xamarin Forms cross-platform app still uses and renders native controls. However, we're going to use Xamarin Forms, which is that abstraction that it gives me one single API to create those apps. So let's go ahead and create this and I'll say my awesome app and just go ahead and hit create here. Now this will go ahead and bring up um, a few things. Uh, first, if you just installed Visual Studio, you might get this little uh, Xamarin messaging broker pop up. We're going to allow that. We're actually going to use this. This is part of Xamarin Hot uh, Restart, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. So we'll go ahead and allow that through. But um, here we're going to see new mobile application and we're going to see fly out, tabbed and blank. Now, this is a newer dialog that has been redesigned to kind of show you exactly what the application is going to look like when you run uh, your application on iOS and Android. These first two templates, Flyout and Tabbed, use a newer architecture of Xamarin Forms, a new modern architecture called Xamarin Forms Shell. And it gives you a shell of your application. And then Blank is just a simple blank screen. It's a single screen application. Um, now, as of right now, this recording, um, which would be right around Xamarin Forms 5.0 um, release, um, what we're going to see here is that the Windows project is highlighted and grayed out here just because it's not supported with Shell yet, but will be in the future. So you can select blank if that's a requirement. For my application, I'm just going to start with flyout and, or tabbed because that's going to give me sort of the best um, architecture going forward. The shell part is really nice. It's going to give me a structure to my application. And additionally, it's going to give me URL based navigation, a bunch of other really nice things that are built in. Let's go with flyout. That's going to have that little flyout on the uh, left hand side. And let's have Visual Studio create our project. Now, this setup is going to be very similar if you're coming from Visual Studio for Mac. You're going to see a Xamarin Forms application, and then you'll see um, um, everything that you need to get started here. All right, cool. So, all right, let's see where I'm on here. I'm on Visual Studio. Now we do get this nice getting started page. This is going to tell me specifically, welcome to Xamarin Forms. Um, I can come in and start building my user interface with something called XAML Hot Reload. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and that's going to tell me exactly how to get started. There's quick start application information here, but let's walk through what actually got installed over here. So I'm going to zoom in over here and we're going to see three different projects over here. Okay. We're going to first see that I have my awesome app. This is where I'm going to do a bulk of my application coding. Specifically, this is a .NET standard um, library, which enables me to share code across multiple projects. So inside of here, this application is going to give me, we can see models, services, views, and view models. This sort of an MVVM architecture, which is a way of, you know, separating my user interface from the code behind. Um, and then it gives me a few other files uh, that we'll talk about. So we have my app and my app shell. And then down here, we're going to see I have an Android and an iOS application. Now you may be wondering like, well, James, why are there so many projects inside of here? Well, there's so many projects because iOS and Android build a little bit different. I could also add an iOS project uh, or a, sorry, a Windows project. 
I might also want to add iOS extensions for like today widgets or different, um, different extensions into the operating system or add a watch or a tvOS application too. So there's a lot of different things that I can build and add into my application um, here. And any of the specific startup code or splash screens or configuration and version numbers are all set inside of that um, iOS and Android project. All right, let's hop back over here. So what I'm gonna do is also now drop down into the iOS and Android projects. And let's take a look at them really quick. So the first thing that we're gonna note over here is my Android project. And this has a bunch of references here. So what we're going to see is that there's some normal .NET things that have been brought in. So I can use normal .NET goodness. We're also going to note here that I have this mono Android, which is my Android specific API. So you can access all of the iOS and Android APIs in C sharp. And then down here, we're going to see two of these little things called NuGets. And NuGets uh, are a way as a dependency management system that enables you to grab third-party libraries and first-party libraries from the internet and add them to your project. Similar to NPM, if you're doing JavaScript or TypeScript type of development. And this has added two things, Xamarin Essentials and Xamarin Forms. Xamarin Forms we've talked about already. That is specifically our cross-platform native user interface. And Xamarin Essentials is similar to Xamarin Forms, but it is access to cross-platform native features like connectivity, um, media pickers, um, launching the browser, a bunch of awesome things that are inside of there. Now, if I show you um, in this project one more time for Android, let's go ahead and um, drop down a few other items here. I'm just going to zoom in one more time now. We're going to see that we not only have references, but I also have um, these other Android specific folders. So these are for my images and icons and any of that different startup uh, information that I need for my application. Often you won't have to worry about putting too much code here, but you may have to, and that's what it's there for. And the exact same thing is going to be true down for iOS. So let me go ahead and expand what's going on over in the iOS project. So let me go ahead and drop this down and zoom in. We're going to see here for my iOS project again, we have some different system namespaces, Xamarin iOS, which is my iOS specific APIs. And then of course, Xamarin essentials and Xamarin forms down here. We have resources just like we had on, on Android, but these are specific to iOS and iOS screen resolution. And then we have some other startup code here, like app delegate and the main. Now in these applications, you don't really need to worry too, too much about the logic and code that's going on here. But if we do open up specifically the uh, iOS app delegate, we're going to see that this is the entry point of the iOS application. Inside of here, we have a, a Xamarin Forms app delegate, so it has its own version. And then what we see is that we're initializing Xamarin Forms and loading our app. And we'll talk about that app in a second. Same thing true over on Android. If I open the main activity or the launch point of the application, we also have a forms app compat activity, similar to an app delegate. Here we set a few different properties. We initialize Xamarin forms and Xamarin essentials, and we load the app. Now, most of the time, like I said, you're going to do all of your application development over here inside of that .NET standard library. Now you may choose specifically to have all of your application logic, all of your services, all of your models, everything inside of that one single library, which is totally fine. I do that all the time. Um, or you may decide to add multiple .NET standard libraries, some things for your models, for example, or you may want to have your services um, in a separate library that's testable, which is also really nice. You might want to do that. And then your UI completely separate. So it's sort of up to you what you want to do there. For this example, the file new project, we're just going to leave it as is. Now I mentioned that there is a thing called MVVM. So there's models, views, and view models. Now inside of this project, if we drop it down here, um, what we're going to see is that there's a bunch of pages and different items inside of here. And the models are just sort of data objects. This item has some information about it that I'm going to add into a list. The views also very simple. These are the user interface controls um, and pages of my application. And then we have the view model. Now the view models here 
almost basically have a one-to-one. -one. Here's the about view model. Here's the about page. Here's the items view model. Here's the items page. Here's a login view model, a login page. So it's almost one-to-one -one, where this is code that is cleanly separated from your user interface. And it's also highly testable. So the idea is like, do you have that clean separation? And Xamarin Forms has a built-in MVVM framework that really helps you get started um, with data binding that we'll talk about here in a little bit. All right, we talked about that app that we, we had earlier. And that app, if I open that up, is a little piece of XAML. And the XAML um, of this application is sort of the entry point into the application. So we have some items here, such as a resource dictionary. This is similar to like CSS, if you will, where you're going to specify here, for example, a color that we're calling primary, um, a specific style for a button. We can give it different states and different background colors based on if it is um, if it is in the normal state or the disabled state. So we can gray it out, or we can go ahead and use that color there. Um, and then you can add other other different um, information into this app page. Now, this is really, really important. Each one of these XAML pages here, and this app is a XAML page, which is a, an extensibility markup similar to XML, has a little bit of code behind. And you need to hit this little arrow here. See this little, little arrow here? That's going to give you a drop down. So let me go ahead and do that here. And I can see there's an app.xaml.cs. So that is going to give me the code behind for that page. And we can see I have my app application. I have a dependency service, which is going to register this mock data store. So it's kind of nice. There's this sort of dependency service built into Xamarin Forms. Of course, you can use third party ones as well. If you've been doing .NET development, use Autofac or, or different dependency injection services, you can use that too. And then the main page of the application is actually going to initialize a shell. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But this app class is still really important because this gives me different information about the specific um, app. Is it started? Has it gone to sleep? Is it in resume? So it'll give you information based on what your user is doing. Now, this app shell is really important because normally if you weren't using shell, you would say, oh, let me just set this equal to the login page and you'd push and pop pages on the navigation stack. But shell is going to give you that fly out navigation all set up for you automatically. So I'm going to go into that app shell. Here we go. And this app shell is actually really nice. It gives me built in um, styling for the entirety of my application. I talked that there were resources earlier, but the app shell again is a shell of my application. So it's giving me thing like, what is my background color, my foreground color, my title color, my tab bar colors that are inside of here? How do I want to style my tab bars and my fly, fly out items inside of here? And then let me also stylize, for example, the different um, flyout labels. I want them to be white. And then when they're selected um, in here, we have this visual state management. And what that's doing is saying when it's normal, set the background color to white and the label to the label color to the specific primary color. And then when it's selected, set the background color to primary. So set it to blue and we can see it highlighted right here. Now, these are a little bit advanced, um, but I still think that it it is very important to understand, like coming into a shell application, some of the nice things that you get. And again, we have a bunch of other items in here. So here we have some custom styling that we can set on each flyout item. And you can read the documentation that I'll put in the show notes it's on it to give you some deep dive there. But again, if we look up top, um, we have not only those resources similar to our app resources, but we have some information here about our shell, like our title, and there's a bunch of different um, bits and pieces that we can add in here. Now, this is the core of it here. This is what I really, really like, because here we have flyout items. Over here, I could also add a tab bar and tab items into the mix. If you go ahead and see me zoom in here, you can see that right there. You can add tabs or flyout items, sort of what is the shell of your application? Well, this application is going to have two pages, basically two flyout items. One is about and one is browse. You can set the icon, you can set the route, which we'll talk about in a future episode, which is used for sort of navigation. And then we have browse, which is going to be our browse page with a different icon. Over here, 
we're going to give it the content template, which is a sort of a way of saying, please use and load this page on demand. When the user clicks on it, here's the template of what you should load into it. Instead of just setting the page, which would create all the pages when the application loads. So we're going to say, here's the about page. Here's the items page. Now, finally over here, we have another, a menu item over here. And this menu item is going to be a, a logout button. So that's going to be two flyout items. And then you can add as many menu items that you want. Um, and they're very similar, uh, in general, but it gives you sort of different click behavior because here we're going to see that when this is clicked, it's going to perform a different action. Finally down over here, um, we're also going to define just other pieces of our application, such as a login page. You can put it anywhere in your application and it's going to figure out everything for you. And there's a bunch of information in here that really helps flesh it all out. Okay. So we've added that we've gotten some information here. Let's actually run it that we, we now have sort of an overview of what the application looks like and we can start modifying stuff. So notice that I have the Android application as my startup. It's bolded here. I can come in, I can right click and say, set as startup project over here. Same thing with Android. It's already set as my startup project. So what I can do is simply come in and build my application. Now, when I build it, it's going to build and compile that Android application directly onto my um, machine here. Same thing. If I was over on uh, a Mac machine, it would build everything locally there. So there's a few different pieces here. Uh, the first thing is that when you create this project, it might have to install some SDKs. And additionally, I'm going to tap on this little button right up here, which is to launch the Android device manager. And we can see I have one Android emulator created. I can create additional Android emulators. I can say what operating system I want to have here. How, what's the data partition? I can really specify this out. So, um, it's already run. It's already good. I already have one. So let's go ahead and close it. And we can see in our debug menu that it's set up right there. Now, if I wanted to deploy it onto my actual Android device, I could plug it in via USB. And as long as my device is in debug mode, developer mode, I can go ahead and deploy directly to it. But what I'm going to do here is just simply hit debug. And what this is going to do is take that application. It's going to start up the Android emulator that I have selected and start an actual debug session. So this is different than a normal release or a different sort of quick deploy, if you will, because it is going to basically one to one link in and listening and have a two way communication channel between visual studio and my Android emulator here. And that's also really important to remember because it may seem like, oh, it's kind of taking a little bit long to deploy or compile. It's because you're doing a debug build, um, but that gives us some advantages that we'll see here in a little bit, but here we go. There's my Android application. We can see that visual studio is kind of going into a little, little mode here. It's kind of got, um, my debug mode up. I can still come in and, and look at my solution explorer. I can come and look at this thing called a live visual tree, which we'll talk about a little bit here, but this is my application. I have my fly out. I have about browse and then log out here. That was that item menu. You can shift to where it's at. I can click on browse and I can see here's my different items that I have. I can add another item. So let's say, uh, hello. And then here I'll say world. That seems about right. Hit save. And now we not only have a list of data. But here I have a, a full navigation to browse and to about, and I can click on learn more to launch um, the Xamarin quick start. So I can learn about development and I can of course go to log out, which will force me to log back in. So this is sort of the shell template. Now I do want to point out though, that what I'm able to do is open those XAML files. So here's that about page and we can see exactly what this thing is doing. This about page has a reference to that about view model. It has some information such as an accent color, which is this color here. And then, um, if I go into, uh, specifically the different items here, let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, we have a grid. So we have a grid of auto and then fill. And inside of here, we have two items. We have the stack layout, which is displaying this big Xamarin logo that we can see here. And each one of these elements is a Xamarin forms element. 
So the stack layout is, is, is telling me that I can stack these I stack items inside of this grid that will automatically calculate the height or fill the rest of the height here. Um, I then have a scroll view down here, um, below here, which is in grid, uh, row one. So zero is up here on the Xamarin and one is down here. And it's going to allow me to stack different labels and buttons inside of here. And each one of these controls or elements, as we call them, or views, maybe different kind of ways of saying it, are enabling me to create native controls. This is a native Android button that I have here. These are native labels. This is a native flyout navigation that I have on my iOS and Android application here. So what's cool about this, though, is that when I set my application to debug, it gave me the ability to come in and get this live visual tree. I used it earlier. It's going to show me my entire application. I can actually come in and I can navigate directly to the button here, which is really cool. I can see, I can see all the different items here, but additionally, I'm using a cool piece of technology that's built into Xamarin called XAML hot reload. So here, for example, if I wanted the background color of this button to be orange one, I'm going to get rich in telesense here. I'm going to hit orange. And what we're going to see is that button updated automatically to orange. And I could say, you know, click here to learn more. And as I type, it automatically updates for me, which is really, really cool. Um, I can add more items in here. So if I wanted more buttons, for example, I could just add another button and another button shows up. Um, and then I can, of course, delete that button too. So I can go ahead and delete it automatically. As long as I'm debugging my application, I'm able to go ahead and use XAML hot reload to automatically get the live visual tree and update things automatically inside of the running application, which is really, really neat and makes it really nice when you want to adjust certain things. Like for example, maybe I want this to be, you know, 44 and I want it to move down or I want it to be 100, this padding that's being set right here in the spacing between it. So I'll go back over here to 44. Boom. There we go. So you can learn as you take the template and dive through the different sections of what does it mean to go into browse, to tap on an item, to go through the different application, the flyout and the tabbed Xamarin form shell applications give you this nice big template compared to just a blank page, but it doesn't mean that you can't just strip it back to its core and delete a bunch of stuff, which we'll do as we continue to build out and learn about how to use Xamarin forms and, um, Xamarin form shell to build these types of applications. So I've shown you so far how to get it onto your Android emulator, how to create an Android emulator or put it on your device. But the next thing I want to do is talk about, um, Xamarin hot restart. And um, this is going to enable me to debug directly onto my Android or my iOS device that's over here that I'll plug into my windows machine. So I have it right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging and I'm going to go ahead and close the Android emulator over here. Now, um, hot restart is a preview feature. So if you come into preview in here, we'll see environment preview features, and there's a bunch of different features that are inside of here, um, which are, you can, you can go ahead and turn on, turn off if you want to experiment with it. And specifically, we're going to want to use Xamarin hot restart over here. So I have it turned off right now. So we're going to want to turn that on, which is a very, very important um, piece of the puzzle here to actually start deploying and debugging our um, application on our iOS device. Now, if you don't have an iOS device, you can connect to your Mac machine, get a remoted iOS simulator over there, and um, that will enable you to pop up an iOS simulator directly, directly on your Windows machine. And of course, if you're on Visual Studio for Mac, you have your iOS simulators right there. So we're going to turn that on. Now, I also want to talk about um, the different settings down here in Xamarin. You can see we have Android settings, Apple account settings, iOS settings, but you also have different XAML settings. And specifically, we have this hot reload. And here we can see that we have these sort of different settings here. And you'll see the Xamarin forms one. 
And the one that I was using here is changes only, and that's going to be the new default going forward. That's why I'm showing it. It may already be the default for you. Um, but I am currently as of today, let's go ahead and date this video, visual studio help. I am using, um, the 16.8 preview four version of visual studio 2019. So maybe a little bit different from what you're using, but the hot reload will work exactly the same and hot restart is also there. So even if you're not on the preview versions, totally fine. The cool part is that you can run the preview versions side by side. Okay. So I'm going to close, um, a visual studio here because I just turned on hot restart. I wanted to give you a very similar experience to what you may be going through and we're just going to go ahead and load it up here. All right. So here's what we're going to do is I'm going to take my actual iOS device here and plug it into my windows machine. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Now hot restart specifically is in preview still. So you saw me turn that on. So let me go ahead and unlock my device. There we go. And you not only have to um, install uh, visual studio, turn on the feature, but you also have to install iTunes over here. So I have that installed and ready to go. So here you go. My iPhone is plugged in. And what I'm now going to do is simply go onto iOS and set that as my startup project over here. Now, when I do this, um, a few different uh, modes are going to be, um, enabled over here. So if I go ahead and zoom in really quick here, we're going to see that I am, have the ability to debug to an iPhone or to an iPhone simulator. That's really important to know. If you go to an iPhone simulator, that is going to be, um, um, connecting to a Mac, um, across the, the wire, across your network to have the iPhone remoted simulator pop up an iPhone. You can either plug your iPhone into your Mac, or in this case, we're using hot restart, which will enable me to plug it directly into my machine. So let me go ahead and just, um, make sure I can unplug this and replug it in here. Make sure everything pops up in place inside of it. And there we go. What I should be able to do is just hit uh, deploy and see if this will build. So let's go ahead and see if this is going to build. And if my changes took place. So again, I'm going to go down to preview features. Let's make sure that I turn that on. No, I didn't. Okay. I must have unchecked it. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. So let me go ahead and close it down and reopen it one more time. There we go. Make sure that you actually hit that checkbox. I think I went off of it and didn't save it. That was probably important and didn't hit save. So let's go ahead and load it one more time. Again, I'm going straight through no edit. So, um, you know, live and breathe the exact same way that many of you are experiencing this for the first time. If you're setting up visual studio in the exact same way. Now let's double check that setting just to be hundred percent sure preview features. There we go. Xamarin hot restart over there, which is nice. And, um, let me go ahead. And then again, like I said, I'll plug in my device over here and we should see it pop up into here. There we go. Perfect. So I want to show you the difference between before hot restart and after hot restart. The difference was is previously I only had remote device, which would be a device plugged into my Mac machine. But now I actually have my iPhone that's plugged into my windows machine over here. So I can select the iPhone and just hit debug. Okay. Now what this is going to do is take me through the hot re, uh, the hot restart setup process. Now, one thing I did do ahead of time is I did go ahead and I logged in to my Apple account. So you do have to have an Apple account over here. So I'm going to go ahead and re-sign in. There we go. And what's important here is that to be able to deploy to an iOS device, you have to have a paid Apple developer account. That's how hot restart works. So you have to have that account and you have to have it set up and it's doing a bunch of work in the, in the, in the code behind here to automatically get your device, everything set up and ready to deploy. And that's it. I just select my team and I hit finish. And now what it's going to do is build up a magic bundle to be deployed to my device. So what we need to do is, uh, go ahead and show you my device. So I'm going to use an application that I bought called reflector. This is specifically reflector three. And what this enables me to do is show you my iOS device, but mirrored over here to my windows device. This is super nice for demos and things like that. And we can see we have 
um, Visual Studio doing stuff, doing the debug process, spinning everything up for me, and then deploying it to my actual device. So let's see, it's going to go through. It deployed and it's starting a debug session. And if I go over here, boom, now we're deploying. We're hot reset, re reload is initializing, hot restart has deployed it. Um, and now I have my about page. I have my live visual tree over here, which is nice. And of course, if I go into that about page, we could go ahead and um, change some stuff. So let's go ahead and set um, always on top for this. And I can then maybe change this to red. There we go. And we can see it changes to red automatically. If I change it back to blue, that same hot reload of that XAML is happening automatically for me. If I want to come in, I want to add more buttons like I saw earlier. I can add more buttons and they show up on my device that's sitting like right over here. You can see it, it's right down there. That cord's a little bit low, um, that's it. All right, so that is how I can start to de develop, deploy iOS and Android applications across iOS and Android. You can always add in Windows devices in there, Mac devices in there as different project heads that I wanna to deploy to or other type of projects like tvOS or watchOS or extensions or a whole lot more, a lot you can do. But what I wanted to do in this specific video is walk you through the file new, the getting started. We haven't started building applications yet. We're going to do that in the future, modifying it. But I want you to know the building blocks that are inside of that project because there's a lot there. But as we start to build out the application here on my YouTube channel, um, you're going to see that what's built into Xamarin forms. Well, it looks like a lot and the different shell components it gives you a lot of really nice features that enable you to be really productive. Today, we created a brand new project for iOS and Android using Xamarin and Xamarin forms and specifically the brand new shell templates for Flyout. We've gone ahead and we went through the different project nodes, talked about .NET standard. That's oh so important. We then took a look at how to create Android emulators on the machine and then deploy to an Android emulator. Then finally, we used Xamarin Hot Restart to deploy immediately to our iOS device that was plugged into our Windows machine uh, and still get those great features such as the live visual tree and XAML Hot Reload that enabled me to make changes to my user interface and see them updated in real time into my running application, all while I'm debugging so I can hit breakpoints or do anything else. And that's going to do it for this episode. It's very longer than I thought it was going to be, but I hope that you actually find it really helpful to go through all of the different pieces of your very first Xamarin application with Xamarin Forms and Shell. Now, of course, I want to remind you that I do live stream on Fridays on Twitch at twitch.tv slash James Montemagno. I'm over there and I Twitch uh, stream coding live. So I usually am doing Xamarin applications, but sometimes desktop applications or web applications with Blazor. Um, but you're feel free to hang out, ask questions, especially if you came and watched this video. I can um, get some nice follow up there on what you thought. Of course, I'll read all of the different comments below if you have specific questions. Um, and I'll add all of the different documentation links so you can go ahead and follow up and follow along on the quick start guides, on the different shell documentation, and all of those other bits and pieces that you need. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I release a new YouTube video. But that's going to do it for this week. Hope that you enjoyed it. And let's start to not only get started, but build out an application now every single week here on this channel and make something really cool. So come back next week for the next episode and I hope that you enjoyed it. Bye.